The following program is paid for by Jubilee Worship Center, Greensboro. Before the creation of the church, God created the family. And family time is so very important to us all. Welcome to A Time of Jubilee, a program designed to bring the Word of God to you and your family. Dr. Carolyn Lee has spent a lifetime studying God's Word, and she has a right now word for you. Join us now in a time of jubilee. Welcome to the program. It's good to have you with us as we study how we can get to know our God in a better way. And so today we're going to look at God being our strength. And if you're like me, there's not a time, not a moment in life that you don't need Him to be your strength. Because I have found, and I'm sure you have, there are times when we have hit that proverbial wall where we have come up against the fact that we don't have human strength for some of the things that we go through. And so we, we look for resources and we look for help. We look within ourselves only to find that we don't have what it takes. And I believe that this is all God's design because He wants us to come to that place of being at the end of ourselves and turning to Him because he wants to be first place in our lives. So I've hit that, that wall myself many times in my life. I have, and I'm sure that you have too, you know, because I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be transparent about the things that I deal with. Um, but most of the things that stand out in my mind where I have struggled the most, where I felt like I've hit the wall uh, and my heart is broken, usually has to do with relationships. That's where I'm hit the hardest. And so, um, you know, when a relationship ends, maybe due to the passing of a loved one, that's a tremendous loss in our lives. And it, it's, it's hard to adjust to. And we look within ourselves for the strength to pull ourselves up, to be able to deal with life without this loved one. And it's, admittedly, that is not an easy thing to do. But what about when a relationship that used to be a very close bond has now morphed into more of an acquaintance relationship again, where people have drifted apart, maybe intentionally and maybe unintentionally, but still it's hurtful when we've experienced that loss. And so we, we look to ourselves to try to pretend that everything is okay when, when in fact, we're not finding within ourselves that ability to get over it. So uh, what about when we've experienced betrayals or abandonment? Those things hit so deeply within our souls. I know they have with me. Uh, just we live life long enough. We're going to have we're going to have a Judas. We're going to have an Absalom, we're going to have some of these experiences in our lives, just like we have read about David in the scriptures. And so many of life's struggles will, will drain our human strength. And the key is that we're looking for human strength within ourselves and finding ourselves wanting. And so coming to the end of ourselves is, is where we realize that we have placed God's substitutes right in that place of need and want. God's substitutes. And so he wants us to pause and he wants us right now to just stop and think about that a moment. What is it that I'm trying to put in his place that I am looking to something of this world, something of my own human strength to help me to get it, past the situation that I find myself in, where I'm hurting, where I'm lacking, where there's a deficit in my soul. So what is it that I'm looking to? And most of the time, we start from within. Now, Proverbs 18.10 in the NIV says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. He is our strong tower, and he's saying to us through this proverb, run unto me, and you will find yourself safe. But if you're like me, it takes some persuading, because I still think, well, you know, given a little bit of time and mental energy, maybe I can figure something out. 
and I rehearse, and I rehearse. And I'm sure that you're very much like myself in the sense that it's just human nature for us to deal with our own thinking. And, but let me read that scripture again. Excuse me. In the Passion Translation, the character of God is a tower of strength. For the lovers of God delight to run into his heart and be exalted on high. Our God knows our struggles. He understands and he wants us to cry out to him because he's there for us. How encouraging that is. And he knows our times of weakness. When we have spoken to the Lord about our weakness or our lack of strength, the word of God will come up within us. Be strong in the power of my might the Lord is saying to us from Ephesians 6, 10 in the NIV. So the context of this chapter, where this scripture came from, is where it's talking about the armor of God. And maybe you're familiar with that. If not, it's, it's the sixth chapter of Ephesians. But it talks about us standing against the wiles of the devil. So could it be that what we're dealing with here is not human beings, but we're dealing with spiritual powers. Number one, discouragement, rejection. The spirits are talking and trying to discourage us and to drain us of strength. And so they work against us to bring us into that place of discouragement where, well, this relationship will never be restored. Or relationship in, in general, is too difficult. Why even work with it? Micah 6, excuse me, Mike 3, verse 8 in the NIV says this, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. So what the prophet is, is implying here is that we can be full of the power of the Lord. I try to pay close attention to these words because they're not wasted words. To be full of power implies that there are going to be times when I'm going to feel that I am lacking power. And so the Lord comforted the Apostle Paul. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version about His grace being sufficient. For His strength is made perfect. That means complete and evident in weakness. His strength is made perfect complete or evident in weakness. Mm. So this is, this is where Paul could then say, for when I am weak, I am strong. Because that means he has put his reliance on the Lord. So the process of coming to the end of ourselves sometimes can be a quite painful. It depends on how much resistance that we put in that. Remember where the Apostle Paul was said by the Lord to, the Lord said to Paul, the Apostle Paul, why do you kick against the goad? And, you know, some people <laughs> resist um, rather strongly. And I'll tell you what, the flesh dies hard. The flesh dies hard. Okay, so it gets us nowhere to try to look to ourselves and we exhaust ourselves mentally and emotionally, and then we just remain perplexed. So we're this coming to the end of our own efforts, our own human strength, it forces us to a place where God intended us to be, where we can let go and let God. So in reference to the Apostle Paul saying, when he's weak, he is strong, the, the, the greatest display of power, let's, let's look at the greatest display of power released through weakness. And believe it or not, it was at Calvary. When Jesus was at his weakest moment in his most vulnerable moment, strength then began to be made evident the day of resurrection. Jesus allowed his weakness to made, be made public. It was made evident, as the Apostle Paul said. When the enemy was celebrating what he thought was his most glorious day in the crucifixion of Jesus, he thought that was his greatest victory. Oh no, it was the most power released as one was raised from the dead back to life. So we say, well, what does that have to do with me? 
Well, could it be that in my time of weakness, um, maybe there has been some form of crucifixion to my flesh? I'm not, in no way comparing what we go through to what Jesus went through. But yet there's a pattern there for us to understand. His life was displayed so that we could understand what this walk is all about. So this crucifixion to my flesh is when I'm saying no to my flesh and yes to the Spirit of God. So is our flesh dying? So we have to ask ourselves, or is it still kicking and screaming to have its own way? I want the power of my flesh to fade away because I want the nearness of Father God to be in my life. In the same moment of despair is when the great immeasurable might was shown in Jesus Christ. His power now surges within our beings. After all, His power lives within us as believers in Jesus Christ. And I'm hoping and trusting that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And if not, it's a good time for you to become one, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because he is the source of strength for this life that we live. So in case we have forgotten us believers in Jesus Christ, that his power is raised, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us. Let's look at Romans 8.11, and we'll prove that by the new King James Version. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, if He lives within you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So as you know, the grave could not hold him. The darkness tried to take hold of him, but this power that raised him from the dead could do nothing but release him. So let's take that truth and let's apply that to our own lives because up through that heavenly realm, Jesus ascended and triumphed over every power that was coming against him, every authority, every dominion that was coming against him. And so he was then seated as the firstborn of the dead at the right hand of the Father in heaven. But you and I have been seated in heavenly places with him, according to Ephesians 2.6 in the NIV translation. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. So that is a spiritual resurrection that we experience from within. So you see, that is the strength of God that is within us that we can tap into for these things in life that we are encountering. So meanwhile, what is done in the spiritual realm is a done deal. It's already written in Scripture for us to know and to have revelation of it. And if it's done in the spirit, then it can be done in the physical realm for us. The purpose of the cross then was to bring you and I to the end of our own wisdom and our own strength, as he did, to show us that we are totally of no avail whatsoever without our Lord. We're going to hear from our sponsor, and we'll be back in just a moment. This is Pastor Carolyn Lee. I'm sitting here studying the Word of God and preparing for our next Healing Ministries Retreat. We have wonderful, savory meals that are just so inviting and delicious. We have a good meeting place that can house up to 13 or 14 people at a time. I also have bedding. We have bedrooms where, for those who stay overnight that come for ministry. But the most important thing is that it is a safe place where the presence of God is here. And I just invite you to check out the, our website, HealingMinistriesGreensboro.org. Call our number at 336-272-9910. That's through our church office. They will take your information. I do hope you will come and join us. We'd love to have you. I'm glad you have come back to join me as we look at how God is our strength. So we've been talking about coming to the end of ourselves. So I have to ask myself on a regular basis, 
what is God trying to do in my life right now? What is it that he's orchestrating to try to show me that in my own strength I cannot do it? Do you identify with that place in your soul? Think about this today. Is it something that you're struggling with and you've just gone through what I call mental gymnastics over and over, trying to resolve an issue? I can think of many times when I've tried to resolve things myself in my own strength. And the end of all that self-effort just brings us to the choice of where we must release it to God. Sadly, we will leave that for the last thing to do. In most cases, we try this and this and this and finally say, well, I guess I'll just have to release it to God. You know, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't we be better off if we would just start with that at the top of our list? Because it's, it's difficult to let go of our own strength and our own wisdom or what we could deem as our own wisdom. We love to cling to it. But Paul said that when we have our own strength, God's strength cannot be identified. When you and I are just working at it with all our might, then it diminishes the power of God that's working in us. So I just want to pray right now. Father God, we thank you that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Right now, those that are viewing in may be saying, I'm not in a good place right now. I am, I'm at that place where I would have to admit I'm at the end of myself. And I'm feeling discouraged and the enemy is just having a heyday with me. So we want to place ourselves in your hands right now. We want to acknowledge that we need you. And so we ask you to move into this circumstance or circumstances that we're looking at right now, trusting that you will show up and show yourself in the midst of that which we're dealing with. We rely on your power and your might as we take a step forward in the pathway that you've laid before us. And we do so in Jesus' name. It takes persistent faith to move fully into the outworking of that declaration. You know, we can pray those words and we can actually mean it in the moment. But there is a surrender that comes in the midst of our weakness, yes. It might look like we're giving up, but that's not the intention. Not to give up, no. But to reinforce ourselves in the Word of God and to know that He is the one that we can trust. You know, there's an internal strength and there's an external strength. The outward is perishing, but the inward is being renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians 4.16 in the NIV says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Our spirit man is growing up and getting stronger day by day as we turn to the Lord and look to Him as our source. When our heart fails, then God will then be the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. So I had nowhere to go except to Him when my son passed away, when he suffered with cancer and was, went through suffering for a little over two years. I had nowhere to go but to the Lord, nowhere. I knew to turn to him because I had walked with him long enough that I knew that he was the only one that could give me his strength in the midst of this immense heartache. And it was a place of despair and in great loss. My son was 43 years old and my husband and I cried out to the Lord together because we didn't know what to do with this chasm, this loss in our souls. But we found that our God was faithful. He is near to the brokenhearted and to those who are crushed in spirit. And so we turned to him. We didn't know where else to go but to him. Our grief was so deep. In Psalm 73, verse 26 in the NIV, the scripture says, My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I found him the strength of my heart. And without a doubt, 
Did that mean that I no longer suffered grief? No, that didn't mean that. Did it mean that I no longer missed my, hus my son or my husband? No, it did not mean that, not at all. But the grace of God to go forward and the power to breathe deeply once again came from Him and from nowhere else. So I relied heavily upon Him. So when we find the Lord is the strength of our heart, then we can begin to live to really fully live. Otherwise, there, we tend to hold back. We retreat. We live on a, on a lower level, and we're not engaged with people because we're hurting so bad. Five years after my son passed away, my husband went to be with the Lord. And that was after 55 years of marriage, a happy marriage. Once we established that we were going to have the Lord as the center of our home. Memories and life experiences together can be, and for us, were very normal in that we had to share our heartaches and share victories together. Four children and nine grandchildren later, we had a quiver full of blessings. But when he departed for his reward in heaven, my life changed dramatically. Not only were there 55 years of marriage ended, but there were also 21 years of co-pastoring together. So everywhere I turned, all the visuals before me in my home, all the visuals in, in front of me, including the flock, reminded me of my husband. So where do I go with that? What do I do with that pain, that heartache, where my strength is waning? Where do I go? but to Him, the one who is the source of my strength. As each memory that would come up in my mind would drain me of strength to go forward, I was faced with a choice. Do I wallow in the depths of despair and rehearse my losses over and over and over again? Or do I cry out to my God for Him to be my strength? I did choose Him. I did. I did choose Him. I mean, I brought myself to some very practical thoughts. If I laid in the floor and kicked and screamed, it could not bring my son nor my husband back. I simply had to go before the Lord and cry out to Him and say, help me. So when we admit that we have come to the end of our natural strength, our fleshly attempts to solve the issues in our lives, God is then given a platform on which to work on our behalf. We give him the rights to come and deal with those places that we have suffered in. And that platform has to become one of humility, where we humble ourselves before him. You know, laying down all of the whys. Why did this happen? Why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to my family? Why did this happen to the ones who is, in my estimation, went home way too prematurely. I had to lay down those whys and say, Lord, I just throw myself onto you. I may never have the answers on this side of eternity. I may not have the answers to those whys. So I'm not to get lost in those, but I'm to go forward. And I can only do that in his strength. So in summary... What we've looked at today is that we know, or maybe we're coming to know, that we have hit a place where struggle is real. We're very in touch with that. The struggles are real. Yes, they are. We've tried and we've tried to handle these issues on our own. I don't think that the viewers listening in are any different than I am. You've tried every which way that you know to resolve the issue, the pain, the sorrow, whatever it is that you're struggling with. You've read self-help books. You've talked to your friends. You've talked to others who've gone through similar situations, hoping that you're going to find some clue of how I can have a fast food resolve to this issue. I find that most of what God takes me through in this life is a process. Very few things are instant. 
there are some suddenlies here and there where God just suddenly just makes something happen, but we can't live looking for the suddenlies. We have to live in the process of the transformation of what he's doing in the midst of my weakness. He's wanting to display his strength to me and then to those that my life witnesses to as I walk through the struggles of weakness, regardless of what is causing that weakness. Again, it may be the loss of a loved one. It may be the loss of your health, the loss of a job, the loss of a very meaningful relationship to you where things have just changed and it's out of your hands. The scripture does tell us in Romans that we're to, as far as lies within us, to live in peace with all men, but not, not every person's going to live in peace with us. Maybe you're not capable of it. So we're, in summary, we're coming to this realization that our only source is the Lord himself who raises us up from the depths of destruction. He, he has risen and continues to rise from within our souls. I'm hoping that you can get the revelation of this today, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, that was a powerful event. It did take place, but it continues to take place within us because the scripture, as we've read, says that the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells within us. When we get a hold of that revelation, it will change our lives forever. So it's flesh, you're not my solution. But the power of living within me that is Christ Jesus is my solution. So, Lord, we surrender. We let go of our, the compulsions to do everything in our own strength. We realize the need to cast our cares upon you. Every care and every burden, when we come to the end of ourselves, we come to, to the beginning with you. And we thank you, Lord that you've been with us today. I want to thank those that are sponsors for a time of Jubilee. Thank you for those that have contributed to keep this on the air. And I hope that you will join us again the same time and the same place as we seek to understand and to get to know our God. He wants his children to know him. I bless you until we meet again. Thank you for joining us for A Time of Jubilee. To contact us, you can write Jubilee Worship Center at 143 Bluebell Road in Greensboro. You can call us 336-272-9910. You can visit our website at healingministriesgreensboro.org or visit our Facebook page. See you next week for A Time of Jubilee. The preceding program is paid for by Jubilee Worship Center, Greensboro.